fantasy football. Uh, we are back for another week and a very, very interesting week at that, I think you will all agree. Um, we did pretty well this week, ended up on 65 points, at the average of 47, so well above that. Uh, and after a very poor week last time, like really bad last time, um, what did we get? 34, yeah. Uh, feeling like that was a lot better. I only made one transfer and that was to drop Deli Alley and bring in Sterling, which turned out to be a really good decision. Um, I wanted to also put in, or I, I kind of thought about putting Aguero in, maybe drop, dropping Walker, put Aguero in, kind of filling around, but it would have cost me like nine points to do it and I don't think it would have been worth it in the end. So, um, pretty happy with how it came about. So De Gea obviously conceded two goals, so only two points for him, but it's two points I wouldn't have got with Spironi, so, you know, I knew that was going to be a thing, but De Gea's still the number one goalkeeper in fantasy football, so you can't really argue with that. On and Walker, clean sheets, and Gomez, a clean sheet as well, so, you know, that is 18 points just there at the back, which is really good. Um, Decor not doing anything special, MacArthur, nothing special, and Son, apart from a clean sheet, nothing special. Sterling uh, did really well, got two assists, I believe, yeah, um, and a clean sheet, so he ended up on 10 points, which obviously got him 20 with the captain, uh, double captain. Salah got a goal, Firmino got a goal, Kane didn't do anything, so um, overall pretty happy um, with the points for the week, but it's up now to under a million overall which I'm happy with. Uh, I think a friend of mine has about 50 points more than me, and he said overall he was at like 600,000 or something, so you can see it's really tight. Um, no, I was about 200 points behind him at one point, so uh, he's had a terrible time recently, um, and I've done consistently pretty well apart from last week. Um, but under a million with 5,700,000 players is good. However, as I always say, there are a lot of those accounts which are either double accounts which people are making or triple accounts or uh, potentially people have just given up um, and, and left it. So I probably think out of an overall user base, there's probably two to three active, I'd say. I, I don't know if there's a way to tell how many people are active. They probably don't want people to know. But I would imagine there's probably two to three million active, um, maybe close to two, so we're under halfway, which is pretty good. Um, now, uh, subs wise, didn't do a lot. We had some really, really interesting games. We're going to talk a little bit about um, the games, and we're going to talk a little bit about the transfer deadline because transfer deadline day or the January transfer window in general because it was an interesting one for a lot of clubs um, it's easy to know who was the kind of big club in the news that was Arsenal obviously um, for people who left and people who joined um, but there were some interesting purchases by lots of other clubs in the league as well so we'll go through those and, and chat a little bit about it I guess um, but let's go through the results. So first off, a shock. <laughs> Immediately, Swansea beating Arsenal 3-1. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I I must admit, I, I had this down as an Arsenal win. I really did. Uh, but we all know Arsenal. We know Arsenal are capable of being um, perhaps not incredibly good nowadays, but certainly being able to blow a side like Swansea away, or they're capable of turning up and absolutely being terrible and obviously the latter happened there um, I I mean it's difficult to say if this is a one off Swansea have been in very good form recently you, you may remember they beat um, Liverpool the week before just after Liverpool beat Man City and um, in fact uh, I actually thought they'd managed to get out of the um, thing but anyway they're off the bottom they're one point away from safety or one point away from 14th effectively um, so yeah it's not bad at all they, they've had a, a fine run three wins in, in five games is really good losing to Tottenham's no disgrace um, you know and they beat some they've beat two really good sides Leicester will be an interesting one next time um, but uh, you know maybe it's difficult 
difficult to tell sometimes whether or not when a new manager comes in the cars car for hell obviously taking over at Swansea it's difficult to tell whether or not that is a short term like reinvigoration you know we've all had gone through that probably whether or not it's at school if you've had a new teacher come in or if it's at work you've had a new manager come in like that kind of newness and difference learning about that person and you know then bringing in a bit of freshness to what might have been a you know a, a depressed kind of area and a bit of hope and a bit of like fire and it's difficult to know how long that'll last and it's difficult to know without time whether or not that is a temporary effect or um that they are really actually turning them around i don't think swansea are a terrible team on paper i think there's worse teams in the premier league um but i don't I wouldn't be surprised if they still got relegated because I don't think their squad is immensely strong. Um, certainly, I think Wilfred Boney up front is... <laughs> he may well be a bit of a spent force in the Premier League, unfortunately, and that was their kind of like big gamble there, I guess, apart from obviously Tammy Abraham. Um, Jordan Ayew, though, is a good player, and they just got Andre Ayew as well. They brought him off of West Ham which was interesting, I, I don't quite know what's going on with West Ham's transfer policy, um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, it's a great result for Swansea, isn't it, and a terrible result for Arsenal, we'll talk more about Arsenal and I guess what's going on there a bit later on, um, but obviously not what they wanted and leaves them, uh, well, leaves them six points off of fifth, eight points off fourth, that's a mountain to climb, I think. Um, seven losses. It's just not good enough. And a goal difference of only plus 12 shows you just how terrible their defence is right now. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, that defence is up there with, you know, Brighton and Newcastle. Immediately they've scored more goals, I know. But, you know, in terms of conceded goals, that's, that's really bad. Um... There you go, West Ham Crystal Palace, my team Crystal Palace taking the lead. Unfortunately, we couldn't hold on, they got a penalty. Um, from what I heard, it was a pretty drab game. Probably a good result for both sides, I would imagine. I think we'd both kind of be happy with that. We're still three points off of the relegation zone, West Ham are four points off. Um, we've got Newcastle next, they've got um, Brighton. So, yeah, I, I think you'd walk away and kind of you know we we had a little bit of a we were we had a bad game very bad game against Arsenal after two really great games so it's nice I think to, to stabilize a little bit there and then hopefully we can um, uh, take on Newcastle and, and, and beat them next time but we'll see um, West Ham are having a terrible terrible time with injuries though so that's one thing perhaps you could say um, they have had a they've got a lot of injuries and it's interesting that they actually sold lots of players in the transfer window when they really had lots of injuries so I yeah they did buy a striker but um, yeah interesting I guess how does field against Liverpool I mean Liverpool just really blew them away didn't they um, can Salah Firmino um, you know obviously for me great Salah and Firmino there Gomez with the clean sheet uh, I'm a bit worried for Huddersfield now. They're on a ter they're this team on a terrible run, and they've got Man United next. Which, even though Man United have faltered, um, you would not fancy Huddersfield's chances there. But you never know. Um, but I feel like the way this kind of relegation zone has worked this season is that teams have gone on terrible runs, but then managed to turn it around. Bournemouth being one, you can see them in tenth. Um, had a you know terrible run, and I I tip them for relegation. But fair play to them, they've turned it around. And um, you know Southampton have been on a bad run. Swansea have been on a bad run. West Brom are kind of on a bad run. Palace obviously were on a terrible run, and it's been about the clubs turning it around. And I feel like Huddersfield and Brighton, they had this great run to begin with. Then the realities of the Premier League set in. I kept saying when they were on good runs, and everybody was saying that they were going to stay up. That remember Blackpool, you know, came up and had that initial flurry, and they were right up there, and then dropped all the way down. Say with Newcastle, we see it 
a lot and I feel like this now is a crucial time for those three teams, Newcastle, Brighton and Huddersfield, to turn around that run, um, you know, the poor run they've had and, and get back up there. In terms of Brighton and Newcastle, as we said, they're playing teams around them next time, so they're going to be massive games. Huddersfield, they've got to get something against Man United now. They've lost against teams around them, you know, in Stoke and West Ham badly. Um, you know, they've what, scored one goal in the last five games. And it's a real test. It's a real test to to see what's going to happen. Generally, one of two things happens to turn the run around. Either the club sticks with the manager, and the manager digs in, and you know that kind of collectiveness, I reckon, and that kind of like you know not panicking and rem remembering how well you've done in the past, as a la Bournemouth, um, you know has done it, you know, teams have, uh, they've done well with teams there, or they've sat the manager or got a new one in now I don't see Huddersfield sacking David Wagner, because I think they know that they overachieved by getting to the Premier League so I think they know that they're building something here, so I'd be surprised if they sacked him but you know, he's now got to prove you know a lot, basically, that he can he can hang on in there and it's tough with Huddersfield because they've not you know they don't have the money to spend that some other clubs do although they they have spent a bit but you know they they were very much on the side of a, a championship team doing very well rather than a team kind of ready to come into the Premier League I think so worst comes the worst they got a lot of money out of it didn't they um, but Liverpool after a wobbly run, you know, losing to um, Swansea and losing to West Brom in the Cup, you know, they needed that win. And to be fair, four wins in five games is better than the two teams above them. Um, and it's better than the teams below them. So, you know, I'm sure they would have wanted to win that Swansea game or get something out of it. But they're still on a good run right now. They're still challenging and pushing Man United. Um, I think we can all agree now that Man City are going to win the league. They're 15 points ahead. Um, it's, that's five games they would have to lose, and not only that, but the teams behind them would have to win those five games to even draw level. So that's a big ask, I think. Um, you never know, but as we'll talk about, I think Man City brought well in, in the transfer window. So perhaps not much hope there. Um, Chelsea losing three years on Bournemouth. I said Bournemouth did incredibly well. They did. They really took Chelsea apart. Um, it wasn't a lucky kind of result. It was a very poor Chelsea team. And I find it fascinating that Chelsea are in the midst of kind of self-destruction in a way. Because I look at this team and I'm like, okay, you're fourth now. You've had some not great results recently. But you're not doing badly, <laughs> are you? You know, I understand that they won the league last season, and there's an expectation level at Chelsea to consistently win. Um, you know, they got knocked out the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup against Arsenal. That probably wouldn't be good. Um, they've got a tough run in the Champions League. It, you know, I understand that, and Antonio Conte is a manager who's very outspoken, and you can tell he's very unhappy with the transfer policy at the club right now. But I still find it fascinating because I think they still have a very good team. Certainly, I think they have one of the best teams in the league, apart from Man City. You know, up there with Liverpool, Man United, Tottenham. Uh, they, you know, they're not having a terrible season, not like a Jose Mourinho terrible season, you know. And I just find it weird that there seems to be this... I understand that Conte is not happy with the transfers and he's very vocal about that and that upsets people at the club who perhaps feel like he shouldn't be speaking against them as much. And I understand there's been some problems in the back room. Uh, Michael Emanalo, who was kind of like their sporting director, I think, director of football, whatever the hell his title was, but I think he was effectively like the, the buffer between the board and, or probably more likely Roman Abramovich, and the manager, and that worked well, and then he left, and then they've struggled, um, 
but I still feel like there's a lot of positives at Chelsea um, and I think it would be really sad to see Conte leave there because I'd like to see him next season build upon what he's got be able to spend a bit of money and bring in some players but I can't see him being there next season I can see him making it to the end of the season but I, I can't see him I, I mean I don't know it's, it's weird you never know with Chelsea they are very they have very high expectations of managers you know and it's difficult to argue with it when they generally sack a manager bring a new one in and win the league like it's, it's diff that seems to happen a lot with them so it's um, it's a tough one but I, I, I don't know um, it's, a, it's a bad result but it's one bad result like their run is not terrible I know they've dropped down they were like in second but you know a game against Watford Watford who have not won a game in five games just sacked um, uh, Marco Silva you know sure they got a new manager and you sometimes get that new manager bounce but he drew nil nil with Stoke um, I kind of feel like that's a winnable game and maybe if they win that well it gets them back on track you know so I don't think it's the doom and gloom I understand that there was a lot of Mickey Tate during the transfer window because of the fact that they kept being linked with all these kind of weird players but in the end they signed a very good player as a striker so you know as I said we'll, we'll talk about that but um, yeah it's, it's, it's strange it's it's very strange so yeah <laughs> uh, good win for Bournemouth though definitely very good win and absolutely fair play to them proving me wrong I thought they'd get relegated I thought that was it for Eddie Howe and Eddie Howe proving that he's a very good manager um, because I'll be honest with you Bournemouth squad I look at that and I don't think it's very good but in the same way with Burnley collectively as a team unit they are very good together so fair play Everton beat Leicester 2-1 this was the Theo Walcott show right uh Walcott uh, getting two goals. Now, I kind of said, I think I said on my last video, I can't remember, but when Walcott joined, I said, I think he's going to do well because I never felt like he had a good chance at um, Arsenal and I always felt like he was in and out of the team a bit too much and, like, if you play to, like, he had to play to Arsenal's strengths rather than playing to his strengths. Um, he can be very much a player who is very good for short spells and then fades away so there is that but I think he's a good signing for Everton put it that way who have ended what was a terrible terrible run um, they've got Arsenal next interestingly so you know Theo Walcott I'm sure he's going to be up for that one so we'll see how they do Leicester losing um, I mean Leicester I think are destined for that like seventh eighth position aren't they i think to be fair um they've got swansea next that's again going to be really interesting to see how they kind of react to that the maris thing is apparently maris was set for a move to man city but it kind of fell through and now he's pissed off with the club because it fell through and uh, you know it's um it's a tough one i i mean I feel like with him, I can understand a player wanting to move to a club like Man City. Uh, like, let's not beat around the bush at the end of the day. Like, Mares is probably on a decent wage at Leicester, but I'm sure it moving, he would be on a lot more. And as much as people bemoan the fact of like, oh God, oh, it's so bad, this guy gets 60 grand a week, you know, and he wants 100 or 150. But every football player knows in the back of their mind that this is a short career and you have to make your money now if you know what I mean and also you sometimes not only that but I think everybody is kind of aware of the fact that Leicester had that miracle season and everything was great but everything now is not going to be like that uh, they're going to be destined for that mid-table Premier League upper mid-table probably maybe some good cup runs 
but ultimately I'd be very surprised if in my lifetime they make it back into the Champions League that's probably optimistic you don't know what's going on but certainly within the next five years I'll be optimistic whether or not, you know, I, I would be pessimistic sorry that they would make it into the uh, Champions League again you never know of course but so I feel like he kind of knows that and he's probably thinking well I've given them a chance I stayed the season after you know, another half a season, we're not really making progress, and I think he probably feels like he's owed a move. Um, and I think he probably, I don't think many people would argue with that, that he's destined for a higher level. And Man City are pretty much the highest level in the Premier League right now. Certainly one of the top clubs in the world. And, um, yeah, it's, it, I feel it's a shame that he didn't go, in a way. I feel like he kind of earned that. I'd like to see him playing alongside Man City in a Pep Guardiola team because he's clearly a very talented player. Um, but I guess he's there till the end of the season and he'll probably go then, right? I would imagine. Uh, Newcastle Burnley 1 1. Own goal from uh, Darlow. Unfortunately, Newcastle needed a win there, really. Burnley are just ticking over. Um, Newcastle have got Crystal Palace next. We'll see how they do. They brought a few players as well in the transfer window. Or not really brought, loaned, shall we say. Uh, we'll see how they do. Southampton won, Brighton won. Uh, I mean, um, was it, like, am I wrong in thinking Glenn Murray was arrested for tax fraud and that he's playing and scoring a goal? Like, fair play to the guy. Um, I don't know if that's true though, allegedly. I don't know if it's true or, or whatever, but uh, fair play if that, that is true. Um, Southampton on a bad run and like, you got to feel for Southampton. They constantly have their best, best players from their youth. What is a fantastic, probably best youth set up in the country, constantly pillaged by bigger clubs. That's their model. Eventually it's going to catch up with them. I don't think it's going to be this season. Like, I think, potentially, I, I think they're going to have enough about them to get out, but they've got to start winning games, and that's, you know, a struggle right now for them, I guess. Um, Man City with a pretty routine win, I'd say, against West Brom Sterling with two assists, obviously, in my team. I think everybody could see the way that one was going. Um, yeah, West Brom had done okay up to their big match against Southampton coming up. This is going to be a big weekend next weekend. Or oh, is it? Yeah, this weekend, sorry. Um, it's going to be some tough games going on at the bottom of the table. Um, Stoke Watford 0-0. I mean, I guess like both clubs will be happy with that. But that's... You know, I think Watford, they've sacked Marco Silva. <laughs> kind of uh, Everton ruined him didn't they basically they've got Chelsea next I feel like they could still get dragged down um, the new manager yeah I mean it, you know Watford have done this where they've had new managers constantly eventually you feel like it's going to catch up with them but I feel like they've got a good enough team a good enough squad to, to stay up this season and I mean time will tell it's, it's so tight know from probably Everton downwards really um, I'd say Everton may be just about out of it but certainly Bournemouth downwards it, it can change week by week um, Spurs 2 Man United nil watch this game and Spurs just obliterated Man United it should have been a lot more um, Harry Kane had a bit of an off day Man United just I don't know what it is with them. They don't seem to be able to settle, if that makes sense. Like, at the beginning of the season, they looked really good. And now they've, they're kind of like, I, I don't feel like they've got this style. Like, I can tell you how Liverpool play. I can tell you how Arsenal play. I can tell you how Chelsea play. I can tell you how Man City play. I can tell you how Spurs play. I can't tell you how Man United play. Like, I feel like they're this just hodgepodge of really talented players who have not gelled yet. Sanchez in the team, you know, there was no Man United player who had a good, good, um, good game, apart from Phil Jones, who scored a fantastic goal, like, what a finish for Phil Jones, 
I'm surprised he wasn't a striker in his youth. I am being sarcastic. He scored no goal. Um, but, yeah, Ericsson scoring the third quickest, I think, goal in the history of the Premier League. Like, it's not bad. Of course, I drop Ali and he gets an assist, but I dropped him for Sterling. He got two assists, so I, I'll take that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, an interesting week, definitely. Um, in terms of the table, you can see here, Again, as I said, I think Bournemouth down are still struggling. I think Everton can have enough to get out. We'll, we'll talk about what they've done this season. But um, I apologise for the banging as well. My neighbours are being really annoying. Uh, I guess maybe they went to Ikea, got some new furniture or something. Um, I'm really sorry about that. Do you think they're done? No. One last bang. There we go. Maybe they're done now. Anyway, uh, let's have a look. So that's the league. Let's have a look at the transfers, I think. So, third deals Arsenal got in Aubameyang uh, and Mkhitaryan, which I swapped for Sanchez. I said at the time, I think that Mkhitaryan is as good a like option they could have got for Sanchez um, at the time. That doesn't mean he is a replacement for Sanchez. He is not as good as Sanchez. I will say that he's not as accustomed to the Premier League. And if you if you had to, you know, put me in a, a, a like a box and say which one do you want to choose, I would go with um, Sanchez every single time, like without doubt. But they didn't have a choice, <laughs> did they? It was that or nothing. And if you have that or nothing, then Mkhitaryan's a very good option. So should there be a Bama Yang? I said before that I feel like he's a bit overrated. I'm very surprised they picked up him when they have Lacazette. Um, but he has some qualities about him. He is a goal scorer. He's a poacher. He's quick. You know, he's exciting. And you know, he will probably add something to that team without a doubt. I mean, he is going to add something to the team. I think that defensively they're still pretty terrible um, and they have lost a lot of players you know this season uh, they lost Giroud to Chelsea which you know, Giroud's a good player you know make no mistake and he's certainly not past it by any means because he's only 31 the thing about Bamiyang I find interesting is that Bamiyang is I believe he's he's 30 in 17 months okay so he's 28 but close to 29 so he's in his prime, but that's a lot of money to pay for a player at that age. Um, I feel like this was a bit of a signing to appease the fans, if I'm being honest. He's clearly not a bad player. Like, he's not a bad player. I don't think he is a world-class striker. He isn't, in my opinion. I could be wrong. Um... I don't think he's got the temperament for it. Uh, I think Dortmund wanted to sell him because of disciplinary issues. Um, and I think they got a good deal for him. Like, I think they'll be happy with him, with getting 60 million for him. Um, again, in terms of, as a player, Arsenal can sign. I think he's as good as they can get because they're not on a Champions League side right now. They're not probably going to be next season either, unless they win the Euro Cup, uh, the UEFA Cup. But, yeah, it, it'd be interesting where he fits in. Um, a lot of people are saying, like, oh, what are they going to do? Put Lacazette on the left wing. Uh, I think they just drop Lacazette. Like, honestly, I think Lacazette is has struggled certainly the last few games I think he might need a bit of a break and I think they drop him next game and put Aubameyang up front um, whether or not that's going to work out well for them I don't know again defensively they're still shocking better check is on the wane he was on the wane when he joined Arsenal and it's like two years ago so I said at the time they'd get two good seasons out of him and then I think he will you know they need to think long term and they didn't as usual um so interesting defensively mid, yeah, defensive midfielder still struggling uh, I will say having Mkhitaryan, Aubameyang Ozil obviously signed a new contract which is a great 
thing for Arsenal. I don't think Ozil is a world-class player. I'm going to say that. I think he's a very good attacking midfielder. He is very bad, um, like in terms of consistency and in terms of work ethic. I think um, he, he and he needs to step that up. And maybe now he is kind of like the top player. I think in the team. Then maybe he will. Maybe he was always overshadowed a bit by Sanchez. But it's going to be interesting. But that, without doubt, they could not afford to lose Ozil at the end of the season. Um, on a free, that would have been devastating for him, I think. And again, in terms of a team who are not in the Champions League, that's, it's really good that they managed to keep him on board. Um, obviously, lost a lot of players. Walcott, Oxlade-Chamberlain, last transfer window. Coquelin, you know, a lot of these players who are... Um, you know, kind of like have been staple Arsenal players for a long time, so it's, it's interesting how to see how Arsenal are going to go. Um, in terms of like how I would rate Aubameyang as a top-class striker, in my opinion, he's in the same quality as like a Lacazette, um, and I would say if I was looking at the top strikers of the other team. I'd say Aguero is better. Kane is definitely better. Uh, Lukaku. I don't know about Lukaku. I'd say he's probably around about the same. Maybe a little bit better. A um, lot younger though, Lukaku. Um, Morata, I'd say a similar level as well. Um, and Firmino, very different player, but maybe Firmino stretches a little bit better, in my opinion. But what Aubameyang is not is a world-class striker. He's not a Kane. He's not a Suarez. Um, yeah, he's not a Ronaldo, obviously. Um, he's not a Lewandowski. He's not a um, Iguain, I would say. So, yeah, I think he's as good as Arsenal can get. But to think that he, like, the way I feel is, is a lot of Arsenal fans are thinking this guy is going to be their saviour. Like, this is the guy who's going to turn us around. We've got this world-class striker and he's going to win games on his own. And I'm like, uh, I don't see that happening personally. And they're like, oh, it's great. He's teaming up with Mkhitaryan again. And it's like, you've got a really bad defence, guys. Um, like, really bad. So, uh, it's, it's still a bit of a mess there, but... Anyway, uh, Bournemouth didn't really do very much. Brighton brought in some players who I've never heard of, apart from Yellower from Leicester. They brought in strikers a lot, which fair play. They need to score goals. They brought in strikers. Like, you can't um, argue with that, although very unproven strikers, apart from Yellower, perhaps. Burley got Aaron Lennon and, and um, Nicolo. That's good. Chelsea got Giroud. Everson Palmieri, who's like a left-sided defender, and Ross Barkley. I'm not sure about Ross Barkley, uh, but I think Giroud's a good signing for them, definitely. I think it's a really good signing. Uh, Crystal Palace, we got Jaroslav Szczak, who's a Polish defender. Erdor Rakip, who's a, uh, I think, Norwegian uh, or Danish midfielder on loan from Benfica, who's apparently very good and we got Alexander Sorloth who's a striker from FC Michelin who's like a six foot four striker who I like the look of but very that that is a that's a gamble basically he's young he's 22 but like he he's done well for FC Michelin this season uh, in Denmark I believe um, but when he went to um, a Dutch side FC Grown something I can't pronounce that name, but he did not do so well. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with him. He's not exactly a proven striker. So, but we had to get a striker, and we did. So we'll see how he is. I hope he's really good, but we'll see. Um, Everton got in second. Tosson. They got Mangala on loan for Man City, which is a really good signing. I think. I don't think Mangala fits the Man City like play out from the back mould, but certainly I think he's do well at Everton. I think Theo Walcott. So I think they've signed really well. They spent a hell of a lot of money though this season. Um, 
a hell of a lot. Uh, Huddersfield got in some some good players actually. Well, so Alex Pritchard from Norwich and Terence Kungolo are good players. I don't know if it's enough, man. I don't know if it's enough for them. Uh, Leicester didn't really get anybody. They sold a few players. They Slimani out on loan to Newcastle. Musa went to CSK in Moscow and you lower out loan. That's a lot of strikers to lose, you know. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. Liverpool obviously got Virgil van Dijk. Uh, lost Coutinho. Also sold Daniel Sturridge as well, interestingly, to West Brom, which is a really good signing for West Brom. I'm not going to lie. That is a really good signing. I, I wish Palace had, had signed Sturridge, but uh, I guess maybe he was too much or something. I don't know. Uh, Man City got Jack Harris from New York City FC. Well, considering they own that club, it's not really surprising. And they got Laporte, who's a very good ball-playing uh, defender, who I think will fit in very well to their side. Not perhaps defensively the best, um, but they don't really, really need to be. They, they, that's not necessarily what they need. So, yeah, I think he'll do well there. Man United got in um, Sanchez, obviously. Lost Mkhitaryan. Uh, other big ones. Uh, Newcastle got in Kennedy on loan. Uh, a goalkeeper from Sparta Prague and Slimani from Leicester. I think they did as well as they could. Like, they don't have any money, do they? Or they do have a lot of money, I'm going to say. It's just they've got an owner who doesn't want to spend any money. And there's this constant, like, takeover talk happening, which I, I really hope Newcastle are a fantastic club. I really hope they get it sorted out and get taken over by somebody who wants to drive that club forward because they have some of the best fans and they deserve a good football team, or at least a football team, which, you know, is going to have a bit of ambition about them I and mean, it's been too long since they won anything too long um, Stoke Stoke got in some interesting signings most of whom I've never heard of <laughs> I'm going to lie I've not heard of any of those players so we'll see um, Stoke I mean it was Paul Lambert who took over I don't know if they're his signings or if they're the signings of the club we'll have to wait and see how they do uh, didn't really lose anybody though, so I guess at the end of the day they've, they've strengthened their squad, if nothing else. Swansea signed Andre Ayew from West Ham. Um, he's going to join his brother, Jordan Ayew, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's a good signing for him, I think. Not, I don't think Swansea are a bad side. Uh, I think maybe they needed more than one player though, to be honest. Uh, Tottenham got Lucas Moura. Again, 25 million for him is actually pretty good business uh, certainly Spurs are renowned for doing good business and I think they did again but I do always feel that their squad is too thin and I'd like to see them uh, get a few you know get a few players in uh, to kind of bolster it but they're, they're very much like frugal would be the word I'd use of Spurs very frugal um uh, Watford, I just saw they got De La Feu in from Barcelona on loan, that's interesting um, we'll see how he does back in the Premier League uh, but otherwise didn't really sign anybody, didn't really um, lose anybody major in that way um, they signed a guy and loaned him out, or loaned back I guess, you know, so West Brom um, the big one there being uh, Daniel Sturridge uh, it's tough to say whether or not Daniel Sturridge will be enough for them. He's a really good player, though. I could, I'd really like to see him play up front with Rondon. I think that would be a really good partnership. I hope that's what happens. Um, I think that's a very good signing. He's only on loan, but it's a good signing. He's got a point to prove, especially with a World Cup year. So, you know, we'll see. West Ham got in Jean Mario from Inter Milan on loan and Jordan Hugel from Preston for about 10 million I believe sold to the Afro Sacco Andre Ayew when they have so many injuries as well it's kind of weird but that's the bulk of the buys obviously as I said Arsenal were the main one and that whole kind of like in out transfer like triangle with uh, Bashuai and um Giroud and Aubameyang it was 
interested to see how that one was going to go. Uh, interesting, I've got uh, something here to just show you guys. This is the net transfer spent table um, in the Premier League. So in other words, what they've spent, what they've received back, and then whatever is left over is their net spend. So, you know, Man City have spent 282 million. They received 91, so they've spent 191 million. That's from this summer transfers and this transfer window. And that is a fucking lot of money. Like, anybody who turns around and goes, oh, Man City are the best team in the world. I'm not being funny. That is a lot of money to spend. A lot. Mostly on defenders as well, I would add. So, yeah, that bloats a lot of other teams out, out of the water. Uh, Man United are next. Uh, spent 145, received 18. Everton, amazingly, is third. They've spent nearly 200 million. They got 111, mostly on like 75, or whatever it was, for Lukaku. But Jesus Christ, Everton, like this. Everton always, when they had like David Moyes and Martinez, it was always like, oh, we can't spend, we can't spend. They spent, and they're no better off. In fact, they're worse off. So it doesn't always guarantee you anything. Chelsea, the, uh, fourth, sorry. Uh, they spent 236. They got 167. So they net spent 68. Brighton spent 57. Didn't receive anything. I mean, they had to spend though, didn't they? Same with Watford, really. West Brom, Huddersfield, Crystal Palace. Uh, Bournemouth next. If, I think if Bournemouth have spent the least. Yeah, Bournemouth have spent the least. Only 30 million they spent. Um, only 30 million, eh? Uh, Leicester, Tottenham, who obviously um, they've spent 107, brought in 92. Um, yeah, you know, Leicester, Tottenham, very frugal team. Um, They've got a stadium to build, to be fair, so you would imagine that theirs would be lower than a lot of other teams. Liverpool's an interesting one, only £10 million net spend, because obviously they made so much money in Coutinho. Um, but that is interesting, you know, when you look at that. And then a bit further down, Arsenal. They, Arsenal made £7.6 million in transfers, despite spending, uh, you know, however much on Lacazette and Aubameyang. Because they sold so many players, they sold a lot of players. Uh, they've made 7.6 million. So my thinking is that is either it's same old Arsenal don't want to spend any money, or it's they're saving their money for a new manager next season. Perhaps we'll see, I guess. And uh, yeah, no surprise to see Southampton at the bottom. 35 million made because they lose all their players, you know, lost Van Dijk, that's the big one, and they, you know, that's their kind of, their thing, so it's an interesting table, I think, uh, to look at, and um, see the teams there, of, of course, money doesn't guarantee you everything, like, it doesn't guarantee you, you know, spend all the money in the world, it doesn't guarantee you that you're going to finish on the top, but most of the teams who've spent over 100 million are at the top end of the table and most of the teams who've spent less than 50 million are down the bottom of the table so it kind of does buy you some things um, you know the Everton one is probably the one that doesn't make that much sense like they're just struggling straight out aren't they um, but we'll see next season what happens whether they'll spend more or whether they'll you know We'll see, I guess. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, I guess we've kind of gone through what the games for next week kind of are. I guess the big ones would mostly be around the bottom of the, the table facing each other. Um, Liverpool Spurs, obviously, massive games. going to be a really good game to watch, I'd imagine. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to that game as well, because Spurs Newcastle. Arsenal Everton, that should be a really good game. So some decent games going on. Man United Arsenal will be interesting as well. See how Man United come back from the top of the game and see if Huddersfield can can you know spring another surprise because I believe they beat Man United uh, at the beginning of the season, didn't they? So interesting. But till then, guys, thanks for watching, and I shall catch you next time. Bye bye.